What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Coker here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And in this video, we're going to actually talk about what a polymath is by discussing what a polymath isn't. And this video is basically being the catalyst for this video. I'm trying to fix the camera here is because I recently received the email where it was very apparent that the person had some major misconceptions about what a polymath is. So in this video, I want to clear that up and I want to take a stance so that you guys know where I stand on this because maybe some of you are also confused about what a polymath is and what it isn't, or you have some preconceived notion. So uh, yeah, those are the three things we're going to go over. Uh, misconceptions, misunderstandings, and preconceived notions that give people this idea of what a polymath, what they believe a polymath is, when it's actually not. And um, the reason why this is so important is because if you, if you believe these misunderstandings or this, these misconceptions, these preconceived notions, it can create within your mind a very limiting belief that you cannot become a polymath or that you're not doing the right things in order to cultivate the polymathic mindset. And by doing so, it also, it almost creates this like very, um, you know, elitist type of mentality that only a select few can, can ever become polymaths. And that is totally not the case. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to let you guys know I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, I've got like some congestion going on. As you guys can see, I'm chilling on my couch. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm wearing my Star Wars ABC uh, alphabet t-shirt because this topic is very elementary, my dear Watson. But uh, so if you notice me sniffling or something like that, I, I apologize. But I wanted to get this video out. And, um, and I thought, I really do think it's very important. Now, for those of you that don't have a lot of time, because this video is probably going to be around 30 minute mark, maybe even almost to the hour, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the bottom line, the, the main takeaway right now. A polymath is not just someone who is academic or a scientist. That is the bottom line. So if you didn't have a lot of time to tune in to today's video and you can't go through all the details, totally get it. You're good to go. If you want to stick around to hear a more in-depth explanation where you can see how I come to that conclusion and what my stance is and, and all that, stick around and here we go. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, actually, let me give you guys kind of a little bit more of an idea of the background of the situation. Um, I received an email recently, and uh, this is not out of the, this is nothing unusual. As a YouTube creator and somebody on social media, um, it's very common that people email you and, and want to interact and things like that, and most of the time, I totally embrace it. However, when, when you're out there like that, it also sometimes makes you a target. And people may be inclined to share their very passionate ideas with you. And so that's kind of what the case was. I received a sort of obtuse email recently. And uh, in it, the individual was telling me it started off kind of on a, like this really good note. And I was sort of excited. It, it was like uh, the, the person was saying that they were, they were planning on creating a web uh, about polymathics or about polymaths. Now, just let me pause here so that we can all be on the same page. I'm assuming that when he says web, he means website. Uh, however, I totally understand that maybe it, I it's some sort of new app that I'm not familiar with. Maybe it's slang for something else, or perhaps it's a, you know, a British, you know, um, colloquial term for website or something else that I'm not familiar with. I totally like 
that could be the case. And if that's the case and I misinterpreted something, totally get it. But I'm going to I'm going off of this assuming that he means website. And the individual said that um, they wanted to create a web talking about polymath. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is probably somebody who wants to collaborate. This happens a lot. I get emails, people who I know me as uh, a polymath or the polymath channel or whatever. They're like, oh, okay, you know, let me try to collaborate with him. Cool. So I was kind of excited. I was like, okay, where is this going? And then I found out that that was not the case. <laughs> this email was more about providing constructive criticism in a very passive aggressive way. And you know what? If that's, if that's how people have to get their, their thoughts across, totally cool. Uh, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But um, to, boil, to boil down the, the core concepts of his email, he basically was saying that I was, I was misinforming the youth. I was misinforming young people who are on YouTube by, by not telling them what a polymath actually is. Now, he didn't ever really state what he believed the polymath was, but he sort of alluded to it by saying that he, he asked me in a, in a very passive aggressive way uh, why I wasn't teaching about math and science and rhetoric and physics and, and all those academic things that make someone a polymath. And I was like, this is a very interesting thing. It's very interesting that he would think that, or he assumes that that's what a polymath is. And I realized because I too, at one point was under that misconception for, for various reasons that we're going to get into. So I could totally understand, but at the same time, um, I was thinking like what I bet you anything, a bunch of people on my channel may think may have that same kind of, preconceived notion like a polymath is someone who's like Albert Einstein they're they're a genius they're a physicist they know numbers they're academic and all this other stuff and it couldn't be further from the truth so whether you knew that or not today what I really want to do is dig deep into why that's not necessarily the true meaning of what it what what a polymath is and so that one you guys know my stance and two if somebody ever challenges you on this or if you ever question yourself, like, are you going in the right direction to become a, a polymath and reach your, reach your full potential that you will know why you're, you're doing the right thing. So now let me, I'm going to get into a screen share here. Probably going to see an infinity screen in a second. Okay. Now I'm going to switch over to this and I have a couple um searches set up so that we can discuss now i basically typed in what is a polymath but you can type in define polymath you can look it up in a book if you don't trust the internet whatever you want to do but uh just so that you guys know i'm not just pulling this definition out of my butt or pulling it out of my ear i want you guys to see that everything i'm providing you other people agree with and that they didn't just come from me so according to the, the definition that pops up on uh, a Google web search, polymath is a person of wide ranging knowledge or learning. Okay. And that's, if you look at other places, it's going to essentially tell you the same thing. Will the wording be different here and there possibly, but the overall concept is it's a person that knows various subjects. Okay. Um, now let's take a look here at the Greek origins. Now I've talked to you about this before. In my videos, I normally use the Greek root words poly and mathos. They're going a little bit deeper here. It's, it's not a big deal. It's the same thing. They, they have the two Greek words, palu and mathenane, okay, which combine to create the Greek word palumethes, which eventually became polymath. 
Now, just so that you guys know, you can see here, palu means much, mathenane means learn. Poly means many or much, and mathos, the, the terms that I usually use, means uh, subject. It's all alluding to the same exact thing, which is someone who has a great deal of knowledge in many subjects. Now, as you guys know, as I've stated before in the past, this denoted someone of uh, like a Renaissance man back in the, in the old times, right? And the difference, just so that we're all clear, a polymath is not a jack of all trades who is a master of none. On the flip side, a polymath is a master of some. And that is the really key distinction there. That mastery allows them to find connections in the top in those topics, in those subjects that bring humankind to a new enlightenment. And and also their own personal selves, they reach in enlightenment. So I'm going to now, so I'm going to read you, this is the Wikipedia definition. <coughs> Pardon me. Like I said, I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, it's a little bit different, but I, to me, this is the one I really prefer. It's a little bit more explained. A polymath is a person whose expertise spans a significant number of different subject areas. Such a person is known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. I love that. I love that definition. I think it really encompasses everything that a polymath is. Now, be before we go any further, I want to identify something that's very interesting about this, both of these definitions. In any definition that you could come across, like even in a, in a book, if you don't trust the internet or or uh, Wikipedia or anything like that. Look it up in a book. I guarantee you're going to find something along these lines. The interesting thing is that nowhere does it say that a polymath has to be an academic, that they have to be a genius, that they have to be a scientist, that they have to only study certain subjects. Nowhere does it identify math, science, rhetoric. N uh, none of those items, physics, are listed in the definition because that has nothing to do with being a polymath. Now, some of you might be saying, but Josh, I've watched documentaries on polymaths and a lot of them were mathematicians. Sure, definitely. Just because someone is a mathematician does not make them a polymath, but a polymath can be a mathematician, okay? That's the key, that's the key misconception that I'm trying to help everybody understand, okay? Now, if you click on this link, it's gonna take you to this page where I just wanna dig, dig a little bit deeper. Um, it, again, it kind of gives you a definition of the polymath that we already talked about, but I like this. It also says polymaths, um, embodying a basic tenet of Renaissance humanism that humans are limitless in their capacity for development. The concept leads to the notion that people should embrace all knowledge and develop their capacities as fully as possible. This is expressed in the term Renaissance man, often applied to the gifted people of that age who sought to develop their abilities in all areas of accomplishment. And then they list a couple of examples, intellectual, artistic, social, and physical. So even if we went off of that as the definition, we see here they do not specifically say academic, mathematics, physics, none of that. They, they give some very general subject areas, intellectual, artistic, social, and physical, which most humans, that comprises the, the general uh, form of, you know, what we, who, what comprises a person and their uh, their persona in in psychology. There's this idea of a persona and the conscious mind and and who you are at the core of yourself. All these things intersect. Okay. Um, again, nowhere is it it limiting a polymath 
to being in some sort of club, some sort of elitist club that only academic older people can be in or something like that. You know, like a polymath doesn't mean that you're wearing your monocle and sipping on tea while smoking a cigar and, and eating crumpets with the boys. Okay. I know that's exaggerated, but I, I feel like that is the stereotype that people have of a polymath. And that's like definitely not what one is. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the true archetype of what a polymath it is, is Leonardo da Vinci, which we see a picture of him right here. Um, and overall, I guess you could say Leonardo da Vinci, aside from being recognized as the epitome of a Renaissance man, uh, he's also been recognized overall as an artist. He did sculptures, he did paintings and all these other things. But within that, we see that he explored architecture, he explored uh, science and math and even some physics. Uh, you know, many people reference his pictures of planes and, and drafts of helicopters is, you know, him, was he familiar with the, the intuitive concepts of physics be, because of those pictures? Sure. But he was not a physicist. You know, he was not a mathematician by any means. He found these interconnections between topics that he was interested in. Um, there's one other thing down here. Uh, another related term, and there's actually a lot, is universal man, which comes from the Latin of uh, umo or homo universal. Yeah, homo universalis right there. Uh, and it basically meant a generalist, which contrasts with a specialist. And the specialist or the monomath is what our society currently temp contemporarily is focused on um you know you you go to school you learn the general topics but then you go to college or vocation school to learn a very specific thing then you join a company and that's what you do for the rest of your life or you create a business and that's the only thing you do for the rest of your life that has been sort of the template architecture that our society has been working on under the, the paradigm. And, but interestingly enough, it's very new in terms of human history. In general, throughout human history, the polymath mindset has been the paradigm that has kind of uh, perpetuated itself up until the, the 20th century where we started to introduce industrialism. And people became like cogs in a machine. And because of that, they needed to be very specialized. And that, um, it served us very well. But now we're getting to the point at, at the 21st century where computers can do, can basically make machines do all those specialized things. And in order for humans to survive in the modern age, where machines are sort of taking over all these jobs of monotonous tasks and stuff, we, we really do have to transfer back over to the, the polymath mindset, which requires one to, to continually branch out <coughs> and learn more about themselves by exploring subjects and topics that they're interested in, that are, they're passionate about, that, that are related to their vocation so that they can ultimately reach their full potential. Now, there's a couple other things I want to show you. Uh, if you go onto YouTube and you type in polymath, or you could type this in, all power to the polymath, you're going to come across the very first thing <coughs> is going to be um, Ella Gale, uh, Saltmarsh, sorry, Ella Saltmarsh's TED Talk that she gave, which you can see it's got 22,000 views. She gave it uh, roughly four years ago, it's a very informative brief about the polymathic paradigm. And even in here, she states that a polymath isn't about being a genius. It's about discovering all the different facets of yourself so that you can reach your fullest potential. 
And uh, I highly recommend this as a video that any, for everybody to watch, for every single person. It's 15 minutes, it's well worth your time. And if I haven't convinced you, I'm sure she will. And again, it was given at a TED talk. So this is this is this wasn't just someone like randomly coming up with stuff. This is someone that Ted, you know, like uh, vetted through their system and allowed to give the speech that has, again, twenty two thousand views. Um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is one, I really just think it's a great speech and something that everybody will be help uh, that will help everybody. But also, I want you guys to see I'm not the only one who is saying this okay like i'm not just making this stuff up other people would agree other academics like ella saltmarsh would agree um if we go here to big think anybody who's familiar with bigthink.com you know that they bring uh well-known people in their fields many times academics <coughs> to come on and talk on a particular subject or write about a particular subject. In this particular blog, a uh, big think blog or article, whatever you want to look at, it's more of an article. Um, they're talking about how to be a polymath. And I've highlighted here the key thing. You guys can read it. If you look up big think and polymath, it'll, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Okay. Uh, our age reveres the specialist, which just so everybody knows is also it, it the it's also known as the monomath okay our age reveres the specialists writes robert trigger but humans are naturally polymaths our natural polymaths at our best when we turn our minds to many things now you can read through this whole article it goes again into very many different topics and subjects the main thing it's saying though is that it's a natural thing for humans to be polymaths. It, and that it's not just for the young, it's not just for the old, it's not just for some elite group of people. It is something that everybody can have access to. And so that is really the key there. Uh, I'm gonna switch back over now to my screen. All right, you guys are gonna see me again. And again, I'm sorry, I'm like really congested, but I hope this helps you guys understand that, first of all, I'm not just pulling stuff out of my ear. I'm not just making stuff up. This is l legit information that other people, other people who are highly regarded more than I am would agree with. A polymath is not someone who solely focuses on science or math, or physics, or rhetoric, or any of those things. Now, you know, in that same vein, though, don't be confused. You know, if we look at Plato or Socrates, of course, they're polymaths. And, and yeah, was, uh, you know, rhetoric was kind of built through, of course, those can be items. And I would highly suggest that if you have interest in those subjects, to look into them. Because I would say some of the top 10 polymaths in the world were versed in those things. I mean, even look at Leonardo da Vinci for a second. If you consider his, his works and his life and his vocation, first of all, there's some interesting things. And if, again, if you don't believe me, just go ahead and uh, if you – there's a book called – there's two books actually written by the same author – uh, the first one is the 48 Laws of Power, and the second one is uh, Mastery. They're both written by this best-selling author named Robert Greene. He's phenomenal. He's got tons of good stuff. But in both of those books, he touches on Leonardo da Vinci's life. And the first interesting thing that he touches on in Mastery is that when Leonardo da Vinci was young, he was not allowed to attend like uh, – formalized school because he was born out of wedlock. He was an illegitimate son. And because of that, he couldn't get the regular training that most did. Instead, what he would do, his, his, his family was still like upper class. 
So they had access to things like parchment and writing tools and stuff. He would go out into the fields and he would he would draw what he saw and, and he would just like intuitively learn uh, based on what was interesting to him at the time. So that's very interesting because here we have the person who is synonymous, the epitome of a polymath who did not even go to a real academic school. So like right there. That's a huge indication that you don't have to be academic to be a polymath. Um, but additionally, another aspect that I think is very interesting is if people always think about like, okay, Da Vinci <laughs> understood basic concepts of physics and, you know, uh, art and, and even chemistry because he used different chemical compounds to create uh, new kind of sculptures and things like that. And, and casts for, uh, for like monuments and stuff. Very interesting that he knew that stuff or he, he dabbled with it until he was able to figure something out. But another interesting thing that people don't sometimes consider is that his business acumen was actually very high. And that was a key thing, a key element of his success and into becoming a polymath. As an artist, you don't just have a uh, disposable income to make these grand uh, paintings or, or sculptures. They have to be, like you have to have someone uh, pay for that. You have to have like, quote unquote, nowadays we would call it like an angel investor or something. And uh, so back in the day, what he would do is he would, have to kind of woo or market to these families and uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for royalty type people in order to get the funding to do his projects. And that's a key aspect of business. That's like a huge major aspect of business. And here we see Leonardo da Vinci doing it with, I believe the medic med med uh, I can't pronounce it today. My nose is all stuffed. The Medici's, I, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, and there was another family, but it's like, uh, and then of course, you know, later on with the Roman Catholic Church, he was he was uh, hired on by the Pope to, uh, I believe it was the Pope or one of the art, the bishops or something, to to do paintings like these grand paintings. He would have never had those opportunities if he did not have some sort of business acumen. And also, good communication skills. Now, granted, not everybody loved Leonardo da Vinci, but he had enough of those skill sets to talk to like the the upper of like the the uh, the cream of the crop back in that in that time, the upper upper class, in order to get his projects funded. So that's something to consider. Um, that many people don't is that being a polymath is also exploring avenues like business because reaching your full potential is one thing, but one of the best ways to reach your full potential is to share your gifts with the world. How do you do that? Business is one of the key aspects. Yeah, sure. You can volunteer and do these other things, but if you can create products that add value to other people, that is one of the major things. Okay. And I know I do this a lot, and uh, uh, Steve Jobs is a really good example of someone <coughs> who helped change and innovate the world not very long ago, less than like a decade ago, changed and innovated the world. Um, but again, he, he had a high business acumen, high creativity and other aspects. He knew how to code and things like that, but business acumen was there again. So why, why am I bringing up this business acumen and communication skills? It's not because those are the only thing that, that polymaths do. It's because they're wildly different than what the stereotypical polymath does, which is mathematics and rhetoric and all the things that this individual wrote me in, in the uh, email. So that is, that, that is me. Like I've made my argument now. I feel like... Uh, I feel like I've given you guys all the tools that I can to make your own decision because ultimately at the end of the day, it's what serves you best in your, in your own life. You know, if, uh, if, 
if you believe if if I've convinced you, then then great. If I haven't, then great. You know, what is serving you best in your own life? Take that and run with it. And those things that don't, don't worry about them. Who cares? But I, I did really think that this was important because again, if we believe these misconceptions, these these preconceived notions, uh, sometimes what that can do is lead us into a limiting belief. Uh, when we believe that in order to be a polymath, we have to be a genius or like Einstein, that can cause us to, to think that it will never get done because we don't have that same, you know, bloodline running through us or whatever the case may be. That is, that is not true. Being a polymath has nothing to do with being in some sort of elite circle of academics or scientists. It has nothing to do with that. And yes, over the course of this video and, and on you know various media channels, will you run into very highly recognized uh, polymaths in documentaries and things like that? Of course. But those are like, you know, that's like putting Stephen King or J.K. Rowling as a writer. Yes, they're like best-selling authors that have had movie deals and all that. But there are still people who are writers – that make money off of writing that aren't that well known. It doesn't mean that they can't be a writer just because they, they didn't write Harry Potter, you know? So that, that's the kind of mindset I want people to get out of. I don't want you guys to be limited uh, by that belief because the truth is everybody can become a polymath in their own mind, in their own way, as long as they follow their own predilections and, and desires and passions as they relate to the fields of study that, that are important to them. And ultimately, like I said, it helps you reach your fullest potential. And um, it, this is already sort of a long video, but I, I'm going to close with this. You know, Leonardo da Vinci once said, and I'm paraphrasing, this isn't the exact quote, but it it's, gets the general idea across. He once said that the ultimate mastery is the mastery of oneself. And so if that's the case, then coming from the epitome of what a Renaissance man is, of what a polymath is, then maybe we should take his advice. And that advice would be to do exactly what this channel has always done ever since the first video or the first, maybe the second video that I ever released on this channel, which is to help you guys reach your full potential by providing you information that uh, is valuable. And, um, and actually, I, I almost forgot. I want to touch on this too. Um, one of the other criticisms that I received in this email was, you know, on my blog, on my YouTube channel, even in some of my writings and my books, uh, you, you use video game references and powerlifting and, and business transitions and, and all of these things. And he, and, uh, it was a criticism, like I was doing something wrong, or like there there was something bad about that. And it's like, first of all, that has that that all of those things are related with polymathics in one way or another. But just so that you guys understand, in case maybe you you're wondering the same thing, like how does that tie in? Two things, well, may, or maybe three, but l l let me just go into it. First of all, my audience that I'm trying to speak to are people who are about my age or younger, I would say, you know, people who are just after generation X, maybe millennials that were in the cusp or after, and maybe even some gen Y's. Okay. Like you guys, you know, we're living in a modern world. Technology is changing the way that, that humans live, work, interact with each other. And so, how to be a polymath in the past is not exactly the same as it is in the future. We have to constantly evolve. We have to constantly keep up to date with modern times. And so I'm cognizant of that. And I'm trying to apply these concepts to things that, that people in those demographics will actually understand. I mean, it makes sense. Tailor the conversation to the audience that you're speaking to. Uh, the second thing is that... Uh, although I may use video games or powerlifting or writing as, as examples, 
first of all, some people actually do those things and that might be the subjects that they're into. Okay. Secondly, is that when I, when I do a video on say powerlifting, I'm not focusing on the powerlifting aspect or suggesting that uh, someone has to be a power lifter in order to be a polymath. What I'm doing is I'm pulling off of my experience so that I can give you a nugget of wisdom that is universal throughout. So for example, uh, not too long ago, earlier this month, or maybe I guess it was last month because today's February 1st, uh, at New Year's, I released a video on how to stick to your New Year's resolutions. And in it, I used an example of the gym. And I was not suggesting that people go and join the gym or anything like that. I was using the gym as an example to convey an underlying truth that applies to various, almost every other field in the world. So that if someone is trying to, maybe they're a college student and they're, they're trying to do better with their grades. I was trying to get them, trying to, to help them understand how to create a habit that would last. And that key little nugget is it transcends any subject. And those are the kind of ideas that I always try to perpetuate in this channel because those are the connections that you can make in, in your fields that may be different than mine. But of course, I'm always going to pull from subjects that I know and understand and have experience in because those are the subjects that I feel I have the authority to speak in. So of course I'm gonna do powerlifting and writing and, and movies and, and, and mythology and of course, like I'm not gonna talk about things that I have no expertise or knowledge in, that would be ridiculous. But I will say this, if you guys, my audience, would like to see more videos on uh, mathematics or rhetoric or anything like that. Like, let me know. Like, there are some things that we can talk about. We could talk about order of operations or, uh, you know, the difference between universal numbers and imaginary numbers. I mean, we could do whatever. It'd be fun, I think. Some of those items are actually very interesting. But I do not consider myself an expert in those fields like I do with mythology, with writing, with powerlifting. Those are the real areas where I feel like I have some golden nuggets that will help uh, help you guys. So uh, now you have it, now you know my stance. Now you have some ammunition if someone, if someone ever tries to criticize you or maybe you're having self-doubt, okay? Um, now you can go having certainty that you know what a polymath is and that you're on the right road and the right direction to reach your full potential. And, uh, and that's about it guys. So go ahead and drop a comment down below. If you think I'm like way off base or if you agree with me or, or maybe you want to talk about, you know, things that the subject areas that you are, are passionate about and working on. I'd love to have a conversation about that. So, um, anyways, I hope it's been helpful, at least entertaining as I go and rant. But uh, to everybody out there who's on their journey, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, this is Josh signing off from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern-day renaissance man and reach your full potential because that's what polymaths do. All right, stay strong.